Okay, Shostakovich Symphony Number no. 5. It's got lots of great piccolo moments in it, as do all of his symphonies. This one's probably the most uh, played, um, and for good reason. It's a great symphony. So I'm going to just start at the beginning and go through measures or movements 1, 2, and 4 and play through all the main piccolo parts. The first thing that happens is this little B at rehearsal 11. It's kind of a cruel way to start. <laughs> uh, but this is a magical moment and genius orchestration right here. You're matching the violins at the end of their phrase and it just gives the end of their phrase just a tiny bit of sparkle. There's a rhythmic motive going yun, da, 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 F sharp, dum, ba, B. So you're just going with the phrase. So think about going with the phrase, and then there won't be um, kind of like a hesitation before the B downbeat, which we tend to do sometimes when we have to come in very quiet like that. And also the last thing I'll say about this B, if you're struggling for that B to be high enough in tune, there is an alternate fingering you can do. Just check with your tuner to make sure it's not too high. The alternate fingering for B is no thumb, and one, two, three, no pinky here, and one, two, three, no pinky. So no pinkies, no thumb. And it sounds like and the real fingering. So two before 11, that phrase C sharp, yun, dun, 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 F sharp. And I wouldn't do vibrato. You could may maybe, I mean, the violins are doing a vibrato. They're really up high. I don't know if it's a harmonic or what, but you're just, you need to be there, but not overpower the violins. Uh, I would suggest no vibrato. The next thing is a little bit more technique um, involving a high C. You have a few high Cs in this symphony. So this is one before 25. One thing to note, all your A flats or most of your high A flats, that A flat you're gonna get to there, G, A flat, G, I would highly recommend doing the alternate A flat, almost as a standard A flat fingering on the piccolo rather than alternate. Um, so it's like a regular high A flat fingering and then you add these two here with your pinky down. So you're going G, A flat, G, and then when you get up to the high C, C, I would take pinky off. It comes out maybe slightly better. So at one before 25. Okay, and then the next phrase, again, same thing. When you get to the high A flat, a couple measures in, do this A flat. On the next page, it gets up to where you have these repeated high A's before 36. It's very difficult to, to stay up there stamina wise. I should also, while I'm thinking of it, um, mention to do a really good uh, warm up up into the high register um, before doing Shostakovich. Um, certainly don't start off, don't start practicing this just, you know, like a crazy person. You need to be warmed up. And I would recommend take a look. I did a video on what I use, my favorite warm ups for the high register, especially when I have to play Shostakovich. And I will link that video in the description here. So check that out. And I would do some kind of warm up before attempting the Shostakovich Symphony. Um, so anyway, back to this. Before 36, make sure you just pace yourself from 32. Don't overblow. It has two Fs, fortissimo. Um, but just, just uh, you know, you're playing the long game here. Don't overblow and just save your embouchure. When you get up, when it finally goes AA, you want to place that high A without too much effort. And that's where the warm-ups will help. So if you have to really struggle to get that high A out, um, it's going to be a long symphony for you. So I just need to practice again. There's um, exercises in that video that I mentioned on um, how to get a high note to speak without like blasting. Um, so you don't fatigue out your embouchure. So anyway, the, the one, two, three, four, five or so before um, 36, you're playing these octave A's for a long time.
and right there, 2B437 with a high B flat, no pinky, and then A, pinky down. No pinky, pinky. Um, another thing that this comes up a few times in Shostakovich, the symphony, when you're really high and then the notes, the intervals drop to the middle register. Just make sure you reset yourself so you don't overblow. It's very easy to do. So when you're on the high B flat, A, G, D, G, make sure you're down in middle G and you're not blowing the same amount of airspeed as you would for high B flat for the G. Otherwise it'll sound like, um, it just like gets out of control. And if you get to be kind of like very spitty, that means you're blowing too much air. You're down there. So just practice that going on at 37. Make sure you breathe here. Right here, this is a great piccolo part where you really get a scream. But with that in mind, try to resist the urge to really like blow all the air you have to, to actually scream the note out. The note will be screaming like I was just getting the notes out with, um, with confidence and it'll carry. It'll definitely carry through the whole orchestra. So don't force it. When you get up to those high notes, A, B flat, A, and then when you get to C, if you blow more air for that C to try to force it out, it will um, not work. So what happens on the piccolo, it's too much air for this tiny pea shooter, you know, and it just, the whole thing shuts off. Nothing will come out at all. You can do that on the flute. I mean, the note might be super sharp, but it'll speak for you. But on the piccolo, it'll fail you if you just like blast more air because it's too much. So what you do or what I do, um, A, B flat, A, <clears throat> I keep the same amount of air speed, but I just kind of press it down, maybe resistance or with my embouchure straight down. So it's going straight down to the floor, just a tiny bit. Everything's in minuscule proportions, you know, that you're adjust, making these adjustments. So A, B flat, A, C, I just kind of sit it down. The other thing is not to move around your embouchure a lot when you're in extreme high register. Keep everything very still. Try to avoid taking a breath if you can in right there at the end of this phrase. pressing it down and not like huh like that just like pressing meaning almost like just thinking about it is enough then after you did that the next three lines I think are the most difficult of this whole symphony because you're in the low to middle register and you need the utmost control and really perfect intonation or perfect intonation with the first flute and the other winds. So here at 41, a flute solo has been happening and then you you come in overlapping it. So you really have to listen your first low F sharp at 41. So when you play this, one, when you play that first F sharp, I would just not do any vibrato because um, it's a clarinet solo right there and you need to be there, but just um, it's not your time to shine yet. The piccolo line becomes apparent as you get through the F sharp. Um, didn't go as I wanted it to, but it never does. So I didn't intend to breathe after that G that's tied, but you can you can do that. It seemed okay. So anyway, the F the F sharp that you play at 41, I think no vibrato, and then as the piccolo line kind of becomes more obvious, like oh there's some other wind playing, then you can add some vibrato and bring the spotlight over to you from the clarinet, and then you have this scale going down. You want to really spend a lot of time on this with your tuner. E, D, C, B, it's very hard. The D tends to be sharp 
and then the C tends to be flat. Plus also this note has a certain tone color with all these fingers down um, or resistance to the air that's going through. And then the C has a different um, resistance to the sound. It's more open and kind of wild because there's there's no there are no keys down. So you want to try to, or I try to create the same amount of resistance resistance maybe not the right word like centeredness to the note all the same is matching e d c b a and then you're okay once you get through that but these e d c b a so just try to keep it all the same um tone color Something like that. One other thing as I was playing it to think of when you get to that G, E, D, C, B, A, G, try not to be too sharp. It tends to be sharp and then the A flat tends to be flat. And so you're gonna struggle to make it sound like a wide enough interval. G down here and then A flat, F. So just something to think about. The next line, again is brilliant orchestration so you're overlapping you come in overlapping the flute solo that had been going on for the three measures or so before you see your cues there for the flute and it's very low so what i do during this time from 42 until you come back in at 45 i actually have my flute on uh, my piccolo under my arm and i just keep it under there that's how you keep your piccolo warm all the way until i see those cues three before 45 and then it should be nice and warm um, it just those low notes are hard sometimes to keep the pitch up and then you don't have to struggle trying to lip up it should just just play very relaxed and the notes should be in tune for you What you can do, what I did just now, um, an alternate B flat for when it's F, da, da, B flat, uh, it raises it a little bit. So here's the alternate B flat, and here's regular. Ideally 45, 46, no breath, and you just continue it all the way up. Um, you could take a breath after the long F, but ideally you wanna just make it one smooth line. You kind of like coming out of the flute line. And so it's very effective if you can just sort of like not breathe and just keep it going. That didn't sound very good to me right there, but. have to practice one thing I noticed um, as I was just playing it for the alternate make sure your pinky is off so you're going F, da, da, B flat once that's over I feel better because um, the rest of it to me is not as hard it's it's challenging for sure being in the high register uh, but a lot of fun um, so that's it for the first movement in the second movement um, you have very brilliant typical Shostakovich part where you're writing above the whole orchestra so starting at 53, yum ba dum ba dum ba dum. Again, these A flats use alternate A flat. This one doesn't always speak, so um, I would advise against that. Um, and then just real quickly going over these trills: uh, three before 54, the C trill, second trill key, D trill going to E flat, use both trill keys. E flat trill, the middle, these middle guys, and then A B C. And as before, A, pinky down, B, pinky up, C, pinky up. And for A, if A comes out okay, B and C do not blow, blow more air quantity. The notes won't come out at all. Keep it tiny and don't blow too much. You will definitely be heard if the notes come out. You just need the notes to speak. Oh, also, um, make sure you always have an ear plug in. Uh, when you're practicing Shostakovich. Little PSA. Okay, 53. 
All right, and on the next page over at 69, you have the same sort of figure, um, just a little half step higher. So same thing here, starting on the high G sharp at 69, alternate fingering, at least to start, because um, it's very easy if you're starting right off with a G sharp, if you're using just the regular traditional fingering, it's um, very easy for it not to speak or to get like a, you know, kind of start. So at least start with it this way. And then as you go through the rest of the line, since so you already have that forward momentum with the airspeed, I, then I think it's okay to go to the regular G sharp. Um, I just, I play so much the A flat and G sharps with this fingering. I think I just do it like that all the way through. And this last bit um, at 70, I the last few times I've played this, I took the B sharp and the C sharp up an octave to match how it is at the beginning of this movement at, where is that, at 53. It's where you have A, B, C. Here you have A sharp, B sharp, C sharp. It should just go in a line like it was before. When this was written, piccolos at that time were not able, were not as well built as they are now. So um, it was just almost impossible to get that, that high C sharp. Uh, now we can kind of do it. If you opt to do that, I mean, I've done it a few times and the last, like I said, the last few times I played it and no one has stopped me. So I'm just gonna keep doing it. Conductor hadn't said anything. So what you do though for the high C sharp, you cannot play the uh, regular fingering for a C sharp like you do on the flute. At 70, what I do is you have high A sharp. So you're using the B flat fingering, <clears throat> A sharp fingering. And then you have high C for the B sharp. And then to get to a high C sharp, just from this high C fingering, just lift the first finger off and that'll just give one squeak higher than the C you just played. So it sounds like a C sharp to me and no one will know the difference. So starting three before 70, it would sound like this. And the trills, let's see, just to make sure, I'm sure you're good with these trills, fingerings, but three before 70, your first one C sharp is going to D sharp. So it's both of these trill keys. D sharp going to E natural is just the ring finger. And E going to an F sharp is the thumb. The fourth movement is another fun one. So you have the trill and then you have these bum, 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 bum. difficult to do those triplet grace notes um, you can just leave out the very first note of those grace notes so you're just going and of course try to get all three in there but if you can't just always just take out the one of them <laughs> just take out the first one and it'll still be good um, another example of when you need to be careful that when you've been in the high register and playing with very you know high pressure high speed air and then you drop down to middle register and to be to make sure you reset what like what I just played. So you have blah, 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 and then the E is down in the middle register. You can't use the same amount of air pressure or speed that you just had done. Um, so just make sure you reset yourself. So if I don't do that, it's very easy to overblow, and it would sound something like, and then you're just gonna blow out your embouchure. You're not gonna be able to control anything. So again, just make sure you reset. And you can practice going um, and finding just real slowly, where is that middle E? Like kind of, where is that? And so you can get to it quickly over time. And the next line down uh, before, uh, between 101 and 102. This one always gives me trouble. What I do for fingerings here is um, on the high E where you go that. I just do a trill fingering. So here, like E, I'm just putting my finger down here so you can see. E, F, E. So it's, I just lift it, it's the trill fingering. So E, I wouldn't do the real F. You could, um, but anything to make it easier is always good. E, F, E, and then a real A. E, F, E, and it's hard to get to this B flat because your, your B flat finger here that to get over the trill key is occupied over here. <laughs> so I usually do um, da, ya, da, ya, da, da, da. When I go to the high B flat, I just don't put the trill key down. It's tricky though, you have to, your um, embouchure has to be 
very forward, a very tiny embouchure, and you almost have to like, I hate to say force it, but you almost have to force it out, that B flat. Um, so sometimes that works for me, going, I'll go real slow so you can see my fingers. Like that. So that's an option, just doing the high B flat without a trill key. The other option that is okay is doing for the E, ya da, 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 doing an A, finger A for the E, and then of course have your thumb on the B flat side and B flat for the F. So A, da, da, for E, F, E, ya, da, da, and then a real high A, ya, da, da. And then since you're playing A for E, you're, these are free to go over to the real B flat fingering to use the trill key and everything, you know? So it just like, Or if you have any other fingering suggestions, like if you have a great way to get through that, um, please let me know, just drop it in the comments. I would love to know another um, alternate way to manage getting from the high E to the B flat. Okay, and then on the next page at after 104, so this is the same type situation. We're up one half step. Um, just make sure when you get up to high B natural, I think it's helpful to have no pinky. So for the high B to come out. And again, with these like that going up to high B, you can't blow through it like you would on the flute. Often that high B will just like, you know, your lips will do the thing and nothing will come out at all. That's very common. You have to keep it, you blow through it, but the air stays the same through the F sharp G, A, B. All right. So, and I always just use middle F sharp just because... I don't know, I do that often with a lot of fa uh, fast technique. I just feel like it's um, it's just e cleaner, but that's just a personal preference. So you could try it, it might work for you. That's it, just try not to blow through with a quantity of air through the, through the rips. And then when you go to the F sharp, you're resetting for middle F sharp. Um, so you can't use the same amount of air speed that you did for those high notes for that middle F sharp. So just watch that. Um, after that, at 108, the measure and a half before 108. Um, the only thing here, I mean, it's not, not too bad, uh, but one fingering that I like to do, let me just play through this and see where it is. I'm just going to go slow. Thumb on for sure. here. So when you get to, so that last measure, that last B flat, I do slide over my thumb. So it's on the long side. And then I have my lever on to play that last B flat before the C flat. And then when you go C flat, C flat, B flat, use the lever here and then leave it down for A flat, G, A flat, B flat, and up for C flat, obviously. And then B flat, leave it down. Da, 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 da. That is the whole point of the lever. So from the Piamoso. Like that, obviously it goes a lot faster, but I would do that fingering. I think it's the best fingering. And then on the next page, after 110, one thing when you get to um, the downbeat right before the 16th notes, feel free to take that out. I always do. No one's gonna know if it's not there in the piccolo part. No one can hear you right there. So the measure before, it just gives you a chance to get a real true breath. What I do on the first A flat, I play the alternate finger A flat so that it is absolutely there, so that it speaks. I do that on the first A flat and then G, and then after that, first troll key. You can just do that the rest of the way. And then when you get to your last A flat at 111, 111, back to the alternate fingering, again, just to make sure it speaks. It sounds a little weird when you play it just by yourself because this A flat and this A flat with the trill key down sound different. But with the whole orchestra, it sounds fine. And again, it's about the note coming out with um, security. So that measure before the 16th notes with this fingering I just went over.
Finally, our last page, we have all those A's. It's extra difficult because we're tired by this time. So again, really try to find through warm-up exercises a way to get that high A to come out without too much effort um, from looking at that warm-up video that I mentioned before or any other high register warm-up exercises that you can find. You just don't wanna have give too much effort for the A because you have so many A's. You'll never make it if every A is a struggle. And just know that you don't have to be loud. You don't have to like, yeah, da, 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 um, the whole time. You're going to be heard. It does need to all be there because if you drop out for a while, that is noticeable, unfortunately. So the only other thing I would say of advice is make sure your pinky is down over here. Your right hand pinky is down for the A's. So starting here, I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but as I'm playing, I'll think of some other uh, things to say. So yeah, you can, for a while, you can just take a quick breath um, in between the measures if it's not going too fast. So you can do that for a while. There's a few places um, where the brass arrive on a chord where you can just take out a downbeat A and undetected. And those places, I believe, are the downbeat A at 133. And you just take out that A because the brass arrive at an important chord. And actually often, some, a lot of times, um, a trumpet or somebody will kind of like cack the note. So that's just extra helpful for us to be undetected that we're not there. And then another place I believe there's a cymbal crash even, which is even better, and you can leave out an A, is two before 134. Leave out that downbeat A, and then continue on your way, and then just try to get little breaths as you can. Just remember, keep everything very still in the embouchure, and it, when you do take a breath, just breathe and come right back. Don't, you know, take this giant um, Pez breath or something. You know, you just need to keep everything right here. And you're only playing enough to get the note out or blowing enough air just to get the note to speak. You don't need to be. You're going to kill all your neighbors anyway and your ear. In fact, that hurt my ear even though I have an ear plug in. And you're just never going to make it all the way through. So just enough air, speed, angle. Practice with a recording to try for stamina is a good thing to do. And enjoy this piece. This is so fun. The, any of the Shostakovich symphonies are so fun to play and are really well written for the piccolo. All right, so if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit subscribe and you'll be in the loop for future videos like this. Coming up next week is Firebird Suite I'm doing. It should be out in about a week. Um, same sort of format. Also, if you have, if there was a measure or a couple measures in this piece, for example, that I did not cover and you had questions or you just wanted to get my input, um, just make sure you ask in the comments. I'd be more than happy to go through and give you any advice I may have. And also with, on that note, if, you're, if you'd like me to do a, a practice guide on any other piece, some other rep that you're doing in band or orchestra, just mention that in the comments as well, and I will definitely do a practice guide on that as well. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.